guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits, and this is video number three in a five-part series on how to knit this top and skirt set. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about neckbands. So I'm going to be teaching you how to knit a neckband on your knitting machine. I researched some different ways on how to knit neckbands, and I found this technique from Knit It Now, which is a fabulous resource. If you're a machine knitter, I would highly recommend becoming a member. They just have this huge library of tutorials and techniques. You can really search for anything. It's an amazing resource for machine knitting. So this is a fold over neckband where we pick up all the stitches along the neck line from shoulder to shoulder and then we knit the neckband and then we fold it over and seam it to the inside of our top. Neckbands can be a little tricky so <laughs> I have gone into a lot of detail in this tutorial on how to pick them up and what ratio to pick up and where to pick up and then also how to seam your neckband on. I show you every step so that you can be sure that it looks really nice and it has a really beautiful finish. Now rest assured if you find <laughs> knitting neckbands stressful that's okay. I know the first time I made one I was like I think I'm going to hand knit these. So I've definitely hand knitted some of my neckbands. So for some of them I just use a circular needle and do like five rounds of ribbing. So you can totally do that too if that's more fun for you. But I hope you find this tutorial helpful just to learn how you can do the neckband on your knitting machine. I also make some mistakes while knitting my neckband. So a lot of times I do make mistakes in these knitting tutorials and I choose to edit them out. But I decided to leave these in just in case they might help you. So in case the same thing happens to you, I hope leaving them in and showing you how I fix them helps you troubleshoot. So let me know if you find that helpful. If you'd like to get the pattern for this set, you can find it linked below this video, or you can always find all my patterns at girlyknits.com, and you can always find me on Ravelry and Etsy as Girly Knits. You can find all the videos in this five-part series linked below, so if you're looking to learn a specific technique, you can find those there. And also, in every video, you'll see a list of times of every technique that I teach, so if you're looking for something specific, you can just check that list and skip exactly to the thing you want to learn. All right, let's get going. So now we're ready to hang our neckband to be knitted. So what I'm going to have you do is start at the wearer's left shoulder. So this is the one that we didn't seam. Um, it's over here, as you can see our keyholes here. We're basically going to start with this uh, left neckline and we're gonna hang that and then we're gonna hang the stitches at the back neckline for a keyhole and then we're going to work all the way across the front of our neckline and then hang those neckline stitches and across the other side. So we're just going to get started. And one of the reasons I had you use waist yarn at the shoulder was because I like to pick up this very last stitch here. And in the pattern, you're gonna have a approximation of how many neckband stitches you will have. Of course, that will um, that could change if you did like a higher neckband or if you made any other adjustments, but it gives you an idea so you know where to start on your right side so that you like don't run out of needles or anything when you get to the end. If you wanna play it safe, of course, you could just start as far over as possible. For the size three, I have it so that there's about 128 stitches, so I'm gonna start at 64 and work my way across. So we're just gonna grab that last stitch with our three prong transfer tool, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start with picking up three. I like to pick up five along the back neckline, and that's for every size, because we had the same shaping on the back neckline. So I'm just gonna pick up those first three, and as you can see, there's like these little holes right here, so uh, you just want to make sure you're getting those V's when you pick up. I'm going to start here at 64. Hang those. And then we're going to get two more right next to it. And then after that, we're going to pick up our back neckline stitches. So just as before, when you're picking up from waist yarn, we can just use our three prong tool to pick up those stitches and hang them on the machine. And if you take a closer look, you'll see that these stitches should sort of line up here. They're like along the same row. We don't want any holes to form, but I find that this works well if you just pay attention to where you're picking up. All right, so we've got all of those stitches hung and then I'm just going to place a weight over here so that's out of the way. And then now we're ready to pick up the other side of the keyhole. So again, I'm just going to use my three prong tool, make sure I get every stitch there and hang those. And when we start the neckband, that's just gonna automatically 
join it there, which is cool. stitch there okay and now we're at the other side of the neckband so again I want to pick up five stitches along here and you can kind of see again like where is the first row when I'm picking up where there's shaping I know that the shaping was the first row so I can see the shaping was there and I want to pick up right next to it so I can see I'm gonna pick up three there and then two here and again that adds up to five. Okay, so that is all of our back. Now we're moving on to the front. So along the front, we had a lot of rows of plain stockinette here. And as for hand knitting and machine knitting, we know that our stitch gauge is smaller than our row gauge. So we need to account for that when we're doing, when we're picking up stitches to be knit the other way. So what I like to do is pick up three stitches for every four rows, and I find it's about, you know, 75%. So I'm just going to start by picking up three, and we'll hang those. And then, so every three, I'm just going to skip uh, a stitch or a row. So I'm just going to pick up three again, going to skip one, pick up three. And it's easiest if you pick up your three so that it's a loop, not loop, so you're picking up the easier to pick up stitches, which you may notice, the looser ones. I'll just make it easier, so. Doing that. And then one thing I didn't mention before is before you start your neckband, it's actually helpful to mark where the shaping starts or ends on the front of the top. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I have these little markers here and I'm just going to flip my work around and I'll see that my last row of shaping was here and I'm just going to mark where that is. Okay, and then I'll do that on the other side as well. So I can see here that was my last shaping row. Let's mark that there. Okay, so it's going to help us a little bit as we go along. So we're just going to continue picking up three for every four rows until we get to the marker. Okay, so I'm gonna just pick up one more there. And so at the marker, what I like to do, because there's a slant here, I find that I prefer to pick up one stitch for every row. So at this point, instead of doing three for every four, I'm just gonna pick up one to one. And I'm gonna move this marker down we're gonna reference it again later, but we don't want it to get in the way of the carriage, so I'm just gonna place it down here. And then we'll just continue picking up along the neckline. And of course you can experiment with this to see the ratio that you would prefer. This is what I've been doing and I've been pleased with how it's turned out. So I can see that this was the first row where there was a decrease, and we know that was our first row after putting the neckline stitches on hold. So that's actually the last stitch that I want to pick up for the neckline. Again, just so that like flows evenly, even though it looks like I could pick up more stitches here. I like paying attention to that. And then we'll just go ahead and pick up these neckline stitches. Last one can be a little tricky, but make sure you get him too. <laughs> okay, and then again, you can look where that last decrease row was. Actually, no, it's usually when I see my yarn here where I joined it, I want to pick up that stitch that's right below it. It usually works out that way. So pick up those, and again, we're just going to pick up every stitch or one stitch for every row until we hit that marker where it decreases end. So 
So I'll just pick up one more here. I'm gonna move that marker down again so it's out of the way. Generally in the same spot. Now we're back to picking up three for every four rows. All right, so I've reached the end here. I'm just picking up this very last stitch. So I ended at 65, which, you know, close enough. <laughs> sometimes I've ended at 64 on both sides, but sometimes an extra stitch works in there. It's totally fine. So now we're just gonna hang our weight on that other side. We're gonna move all our needles to D position, move any yarns out of the way. And we're ready to join our main yarn and knit the neckband. So we're going to have our dial back at zero so we can count our rows. And then we're going to set our dial to our main tension. So I have mine at 5.5. And then for the neckband, we're going to be knitting a total of 12 rows and we're going to be changing the tension as we go. So this is a technique I learned from Knit It Now. I was researching different neckband techniques and I liked this one. So the reason that we're going a smaller tension is you'll notice as your neckband, you know, goes in towards your neck, it's like you want it to be smaller towards the center. So the tension's going to get smaller and then it's going to get bigger again so it's not floppy and that it lays nice. So we're gonna go ahead and join our main yarn and we're gonna just knit across this first row, which can be <laughs> a little intimidating, but hopefully it goes well. So I have noticed that sometimes on this first row, a stitch will drop. So you wanna check it carefully and make sure all of the stitches got picked up. So I actually see that at the very beginning actually I had a dropped stitch. So in order to fix that, we're just going to grab it and place it on the needle. And then we can see that yarn there that should have been used to knit it. We'll just place that in the hook and pull it through. All right, so now we're ready to just go ahead and knit our second row. And again, just check, make sure everything looks good. All right, so hopefully that row went smoother. <laughs> and now for the next two rows, we're gonna go one dial down. So I was at T5.5, so I'm going to go to 4.5 and knit two rows. Okay, so now we're on row four, and for the next three rows, rows four, five, and six, we're gonna go down a dial tension again. So we're gonna go down to 3.5 and then knit three rows. And then for the next two rows, we're gonna go back up a dial tension, so to 4.5 and knit two rows. And then lastly, we're gonna go back up a dial to our main tension, 5.5, and knit three rows. So you should end on row 12, and that is the neck band. So I actually noticed after knitting this that I did drop a stitch. I swear these stitches can be so pesky on the neckband. So instead of redoing the entire thing, I'm going to try to salvage it. So I'm just going to grab that guy. Looks like I can fix this. You know what, I'm just going to use my latch tool, pull it through here. Take a look at the other side. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too noticeable. So what I'm going to do is actually take a piece of scrap yarn. And I'll just thread it through and we'll work it out later when we're <laughs> finishing. Okay, 
So I'll just leave that there. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so next we're going to scrap off. So just wanna grab some waste yarn. Before we scrap off, we wanna break our main yarn. And for the neckband, we're going to be using a tapestry needle to seam it to the inside of our top. And so for that, we just wanna leave a tail that's about one and a half times the length of the neckband. And that should be just the right amount to seam it. So if I go all the way across, back to zero. We'll use that and then we're ready to use our waste yarn. And then we just scrap it all off. So just taking a look here, we can see that everything looks good. Actually notice a little mistake right there. It looks like I picked up a little <laughs> too much, but that's okay. I mean, you won't really notice it, right? But good to notice, just to be aware to um, pick up in the proper place. And we're gonna actually leave our waist yarn attached at the necklines, because we're going to use that for seaming, so don't remove that just yet. We can just go along, see that it looks good. Looks like everything is good. So now we're ready to seam it to the inside of our top. So you can either seam your neckband and then do the three needle bind off for your other shoulder, or you can do the three needle bind off on the other shoulder first and then seam the neckband. I'm gonna join the shoulder first just so that we are done using our machine for now and then we can just seam the neckband and be done with that. So to do that, it's just it's going to be very similar to what we did for the other shoulder. We're just going to have the neckband there now, but that's totally fine. We just wanna hang the right side of one of the shoulders. So yeah, we just wanna take notice that we grab this very first stitch here, which was incorporated into our neckband, and hang it, and then I'll hang it at 14 so that I can make sure I have the correct number of stitches. Okay, so we've got 14 there. We can just take the waist yarn off. And then now we'll hang the wrong side of our other shoulder so the right sides are facing. And again, we just want to make sure we get that very first stitch that was picked up and hang it in the latches. Okay, and then just as before, we're just going to move these back and then join them one by one. Then we can remove the waste yarn. And then using the longer tail, we'll bind off. So this time our yarn is on the left-hand side, and that is totally fine. We'll just bind off from left to right. Just gonna add a weight. Find the yarn gets kind of caught without the weight. All right, so we got our last stitch there. And we're just gonna pull that through. All right, so got the front of the top, back of the top, and now we're ready to seam to the inside of the top. So we're just going to find that tail that we left, which is uh, right here. Then we're gonna grab a tapestry needle. So to seam the neckband, we're basically going to be going through every one of these stitches of the last row of our main yarn and attaching it to the inside. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're just gonna go through that very first stitch. We'll just pull this waist yarn out because I notice it gets in the way. And then we'll go through that very, the left side of the V of the very first stitch that we picked up. And then the next stitch, again, oops. To go there. So 
a lot of tails going on here, but <laughs> it'll get easier once we get going. All right, so we've just seamed our first five stitches and now we're at the point of the neck band where there wasn't those stitches to pick up. And the reason that I had you used waist yarn here is it's actually gonna guide you in where to attach your neck band. So again, I'm just gonna pull this guy out of the way because he gets in the way there. And we're just going to be seaming it along this row. And if you didn't, if you don't have the waist yarn for some reason, you can count um, from here, you can count 13 uh, purl ridges down for which row to attach it to. So that's another option. So if I was to do that, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you get to that row just below the waist yarn. And we want to make sure these stitches line up and we're going to be checking this as we go along. So what I like to do is if I go three ahead, so we can just go along this column here. And then we see that this one right here should be the third stitch that we're seaming to. So then if I count over, I can go, okay, so I should go one, two, three. So that next one, pick up, we're just going to seam to that purl ridge. two, three, and then we're just gonna go along here. Until we reach the keyhole. All right, so now we're at the edge of the keyhole. We just wanna get that last stitch there. And then we're starting the other side of the keyhole. So that next stitch, I'm just going to grab that purl bump there. You can always double check. If I go three stitches ahead, you can see, follow that column down. That should be the third stitch I'm picking up. That makes sense. Okay, so I've just finished the other side of the keyhole at the neck band. And now we're moving on to the back neckline. And again, I'm just gonna go through ahead, just make sure I'm on track. So the third one should be there. So I'm just going to do these five here. Okay, so now we're at the front neckline, and this is where we picked up three stitches for every four rows, so now we're going to be seaming three stitches for every four rows that we see here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure, so my third stitch I pick up should be there. Okay, so we're just gonna pick up these first three, and then after that, after every three, we'll skip a stitch. So that's three, and then we'll skip that one. Don't skip these though. <laughs> if you skip those, then there might be a problem. They'll probably unravel. So make sure you get every one of these guys. skip one and then so the reason I had you put the marker there is you'll know when it goes from joining every three for every four rows to one to one so it's not totally necessary but it just kind of helps you stay on track all right so now we're getting to the point where we started picking up one to one So let's just double check that 
I'm on track here. So I'm just gonna go three out, look down this column. So three is there. Okay, so yeah, from now on, we're going to be seeming one to one. And I just like to double check my placing often because otherwise <laughs> the neckband can look a little wonky or diagonal or something like that. And we don't want that. We want it to lay straight. So just to be sure. All right, so we're about to get to the neckline. Just gonna seam a couple more stitches here. Okay, and then we just want to double check that our alignment's correct. So it's going to go down this column. So that should be the third stitch that I pick up. So this is the first stitch. We're just going to skip over that little area and go straight here. All right, so that was our neckline. And then as we get here, I just want to check again. My stitches are lining up. Looks like I'll pick up one more here and then seam into this one and then that one. So yeah, from here on, it's just the same. We're picking up one to one until we get to this marker and then three for every four along here. So I will catch up with you when I reach the end. And we've got our very last one there. Okay, awesome. So your neckband should be attached at this point so we can remove all of the waste yarn. So I'll just go ahead, remove this front neckline and we can see this looks really nice. And because of where we picked it up, it should be like the same size as the rest of the neckband. That should look nice. And then with the keyhole, we can see that our keyhole is fully formed now. Yay! And then so last we can just take off the waste yarn that we used for the neckband. Okay, so now we can look at our finished neckband. Yeah, it looks really nice. Yay! We can remove these markers. We don't need these anymore. Awesome. Okay, so all we have left to do then is just to join the neckband. So to do that, we're going to take what was left from seaming. So we're gonna thread that tail and then we're just going to do mattress stitch along the neckband edge. So start there. In that first row. And just go ahead and seam all the way to the inside. Seamed that, that looks good. You can see on the other side that looks nice as well. So we'll just have tails here to weave in on the inside but other than that, that looks good. All right so I've just finished weaving in all the ends on my top and I just wanted to revisit a couple of those little mistakes that I made so you can see how they turned out. So <laughs> as you may remember along here, there was a stitch that dropped and I was able to catch it and reform it and then I tied some yarn onto it to secure it. And so that happened right here. I double knotted it and weaved in the ends and then you can't see anything on this side. So really 
literally you would never even know that was there so I was able to fix that and then the other thing was just right here I grabbed a little bit more than just the selvage stitch and then I noticed I did that again right here for two of those stitches but as you can see in general like you wouldn't even notice like it looks really good and also you can see along at the neckline where we were careful about which stitches we were picking up it looks super seamless looks really nice there's no holes or anything and then also on the back side this transition looks really nice as well so I hope the tutorial on the neckband was helpful and that your neckband turned out awesome too I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did make this top and skirt set I would love to see what you made please share your photos on Ravelry or tag me on Instagram where I am girly knits I would love to see your creations and if you like this video please let me know comment below and let me know what you think and let me know what you'd like to learn next bye